Tryna read me, need be scared No one reach, so she think I'm gonna lie to her If she shine, I'm fucking it out of her Hit the counter, I'm fucking them dollars up Anything I'm spend, I'm gonna pile it up All these little niggas wanted some followers If you listen to me, get your dollars up Don't you want me to get rich, nigga, pile it up I'ma give my time to you What you think this AP on my wrist for? I can't fuck with these niggas, they switch up Might go buy me a land, you're a big truck 45 on my shoe, I'm a big step Every on the AP, yeah, the big bells And the loft in LA on the 10 level And the Polo IT, cause it fit better What's up, 2K, nigga? It's your boy. Supreme Cat, nigga, off the real. Hey, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, join the family. And if you rock with me, I need you to hit that mother fucking bell, nigga. Hey, man, off the real. Y'all need to know what time it is, bro. We knocking out videos, we grind. I told y'all, boy, it's gonna bring y'all 13 videos. We finna knock out the little marathon. But I've been turning up, putting. Bro, I done put so much energy in every video I just did. This is my fifth video, and I feel like I done did 10 already. You know what I'm saying? Then this video kind of long. Somebody requested this a while ago. It's so many of them on here. This one like an hour long. So I said, I'm going to knock out this one. I seen it 22 minutes long. Mind you, I done already watched Buku videos on folk. I already know who folk is. I done watched a lot of that nigga lives uh, with him and, you feel me? Like, talk to the Oz all that. I, I know a little bit about this. You feel me? So I ain't going to lie. Rock with dude. This nigga was a cool nigga, folk. Like, I walk with that nigga character, bro. Cool ass dude. I ain't gonna lie. Like, cool as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, you done heard it from his ops. His ops got on here, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, you done heard it from Vaughn. That nigga Vaughn, like, I ain't gonna lie. Folk, like, a you cool nigga you talk to. Like, folk, really nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, we finna watch this little video. See what they talking about. Subscribe to the channel. Join the fan. 300k grind. You know what I'm saying? I got the merch on the way. 300k merch. I, say, I say this all the time, but. That's because I don't like doing nothing basic, bro. I like doing all my shit legit. And hold on, I can easily throw some shit up here and put some goofy merch out. I don't want to do that. I want to get my niggas alive, so that's what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's get into the video. This probably going to be the last video. Y'all know I use the daylight. It's getting dark, so it's probably going to be the last little video. I'm going to bring that 13 videos to y'all, though. No cap. All right, y'all boys on the edit method. Let's get it, man. Make sure I'm recording. Yeah, I'm recording. See, they talking about... My green screen on the way too, so I can start putting it down. I'm BDK. BDK. Hold on. That's a free throw girl and Vaughn. Free them niggas though. I'd rather them dead than in jail. Hey, I seen it. That nigga funny. Hey, my nigga, hey, you tell, bro. I was saw that boy say free girl. Most reckless BDs out But I'm BDK. Will he? BDK. Hold on. That's how a free throw girl and Vaughn. Free them niggas though. I'd rather them dead than in jail, bitch. Play on me, man. I watched this whole little lie. I ain't gonna lie. I watched this over for. Always be myself. Yarmel Williams, aka 051 Melly. AKA. Hey, they gotta Ray. chill with this this music. They even be putting clarinets in the background, all kind of shit. Like, folk, chill out, bro. Niggas be having a goddamn. Dave Digger was born Violins on November 19, 1991, to his mother, Angie B., and his dad, Yarmur Williams. Now, Melly came up on the south side of Chicago in the Calumet buildings also known as the Randolph Towers. And this is the origin of his BD connections. Now, after the Calumet Towers were tore down, he ended up moving to 59th and Calumet oh. with his mom, his brother Wu, and his sister Kenji. Now, this was also 600 territory as well, keep that in mind. And he ended up going to Deuceville High, and this is where he ended up getting connected with Mickey Cobras, you know, and this is kind of the beginning of his 051 connection as well. You know, he ended up gr growing close to a dude that was a part of the 051 crew named 051 Zico, you know. But Zico ended up getting killed. You know, he ended up getting killed by somebody named THF Aki. Now, THF means trigger happy family. Gang, you know, tell me something, bro. Bro, how the hell do you know all this shit, bro? Like, how you niggas be knowing all this, bro? Niggas in... Boy, you would think this nigga was... You think this motherfucker was a movie. It had credits at the end or some shit. Like, because this nigga just talking like folks just know anything. During this time, Melly wasn't too active. 
you know, he was still going to school, still kind of just, you know, being bad, but just kind of being a normal kid. But after his friend got murdered, he kind of jumped off the porch. And Melly wasn't playing no games, man. Ten toes down. I ain't down. gonna lie. And I'm gonna keep it a hundred, bro. I ain't trying to get on here and talk all crazy and do none of that. But that'll really happen to you, bro. Like, cause if you look at this video, if you look at this picture right here, man. Look at this picture right here, right? Porch. And it just. Uh -huh. My nigga look like a regular little bad kid, like regular little dude go to school. You probably class clown. You get suspended, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But when you get to losing. Friends and stuff like that at a young age, bro. Like, I lost my best friend, my day one nigga, bro. Like, like 15, 14. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, it's crazy. Like, he wasn't even active for real. You feel me? Like, to die the way he died. Like, execution style, bro. Like, I'm going to do a story time on it. But it was it was crazy. He ain't it. Like, when they was telling me, I got mad, bro. Like, like his cousin calling me. I'm like, bro, chill out, bro. You, you play. I ain't play too much. ain't nothing to play about. He's like, bro, I'm dead serious, bro. Get on the news. Instantly, I start crying. Like, my mama behind me, mama, like, like, she, she, she watching us in the front, outside, at the school, racing. We, we doing, we got a locker, we had a locker in middle school, we both putting a dollar, putting our money in there at the end of the year, we was gonna get all the money out and be paid for the summertime. Like, this is my day one, bro. And when I heard my nigga die like that, it really, it turned something on in you, bro. It turned, like, it'll make you feel like, like, ain't, ain't no way, bro. Like, ain't no way. You ain't finna just let nothing like that. So, it'll really make you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, being bad, but just kind of being a normal kid. But after his friend got murdered, he kind of jumped off the porch. And Melly wasn't playing sure. no games, man. Ten toes down. And he could move the way that he moved because he had family ties all over Chicago. And on top of that, Melly was just like a cool dude. That's the reason he could be a part of the 051 crew and be a BD, even though most of their ops was BDs. You know, he just kind of moved at the beat of his own drum. And him being cousins with people like TYMB Courtney and TYMB Cortez, who were actually the ones allegedly responsible for the STL members death of uh, Tuka. So he got uncles like NLMB G Slim, who was a high-ranking member of the No Limit crew. His stepdad, you know, Jerome Golden, AKA Fido. He was a high-ranking member of the B. Gang. My boy probably really out there getting active for real before he. Damn, what? BDs, he's actually serving life in prison right now for four murders. And after his mom passed away, um, you know, Melly, he ended up having to move in with his uh, dad and his granny's grandmother, boy. who he grew very close with. That's why he had that granny's boy tattoo across his chest. But while living with his dad, he would hang out a lot with the uh, mall town GDs, you know. And that's the reason why Melly would get arrested a lot around the 67th and the 68th area of the East End Avenue because he was cool with them. Uh -huh. And it's even pictures of Melly with people like Bump J of the four corner hustlers so he was all around the Sticking city you know much. he had he was very well respected and very connected and around 2011 hey, that's when no cap. i ain't gonna talk like i'm just in chicago but folk having points like folk having rank my nigga like when you got fame folk hot nigga got fame he ain't rapping i'm talking about if the nigga would start rapping he would have took off for sure easy Easy, cause the authenticity behind it. Niggas automatically gonna feel it. Every lyric you drop, nigga, it's to the point where nigga, nigga say stuff that ain't happening. Everybody gonna believe it happened, cause like the rank he got. You feel me? So if the nigga would start rapping, he would turn to a no cap. Nigga probably would have passed Dirk if he was good enough. You know what I'm saying? But it's crazy. Nigga having rank like that, fame like that, known for that, and twelve can't even. They can't even do no with you. That's some crazy. Shit. That's some crazy shit right there. Bro. They would really start putting in work, and that's when he would catch his first body. Because in November of 2011, 051T Streets would be murdered while he was sitting in his car, allegedly by M Thang 600. Now, after this occurred, a war would ignite between 600 and 051. And 051 Melly was looking for some get back. And him and 051 Kiddo would get revenge when they caught Shaq 600 leaving a party with a female and they ran up on him, shot him multiple times in the head, multiple times in the ch uh, chest as well. And Melly pretty much copped to this, saying that Shaq was laying next to that garbage, smelling like garbage. 
pretty much admitting his hand in the crime. And what's even more crazy about this is, is that 051 Melly was actually living in the hood that he was terrorizing. He was in the 600 area. But like I said, he was a BD. He had a lot of connections and he knew how to move in a certain way. I mean, it's even alleged that he was dating Tay 600's sister and he would be there sometimes with Tay 600 there. That's alleged. But he would often, you know, mock the ops online about taking out Shaq 600. You know, like I said, saying that he was smelling like garbage and all of that. And, you know, this really incensed the 600 crew. And since they was having a hard time getting a melee, they, uh, they wanted to get somebody close to him. So what they decided to do was they seen 051 Fathead, a beloved member of the crew. And when they seen him out, allegedly out on this hit was D Rose, L.A. Capone, C Day 600, and Trick 600. And as they seen him walking with his cousin, they let off shots on him, shooting him multiple times in the body. And uh, according to witnesses, C Day 600 got out and allegedly shot him multiple times in the face. And after this happened, they was uh, online, all of them online, mocking Melly, mocking the 051 crew, and uh, you know, pretty much just taking claim on the body that they had just dropped. Now, 051, they wanted revenge. First up on the hit list was C Day 600. Now, they set him up to make him believe that he was meeting somebody to buy some trees. But once he arrived at the spot, 051 Melly was waiting, along with the rest of the crew. They popped out on him, started letting off shots, but C Day was able to escape without getting harmed at all. Next up on the list was Trick 600. 051 Kiddo caught up with him. What say you let me escape without getting harmed at all? Well, that was some shots. What had God with him? Murder. Real, that's crazy. Next up was one of the most famous hits in gangland history in Chicago, and that was on L.A. Capone. Now, L.A. Capone was murdered by... I ain't never seen no hand like this, guy. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna let them get their play, man. $10 grill, 2447 FM 1092. I had to let it, let it ride a little bit. By 051 Little Mick. And Little Mick is locked up for this murder right now. He was shot as he was leaving the studio. Dang. What's holding his head, bro? Like they used to see bricks on your shoe when you little folk. Session. They followed him into an alley, shot him in the back. Lil Mick allegedly walked up on him, shot him multiple more times, ending his life and putting up a big score for the 051 crew because, see, L.A. Capone was like an up-and-coming rapper. Damn, that's that, that, that we gonna hit the mall, we gonna hit the stores, and we gonna blow some bands and we gonna hit some more. Why well, used to be on that so hard? Man, I used to be on L.A. so hard, folks. On my Xbox, for when I was young, I think I was like, what, 13? Whenever folk passed, I was a young nigga. Nigga, my bio on Xbox said, Long Live L.A. It's still on there to this day. Like, from that long ago, I never touched it. Like, you go look at it, you'll see it. Oh, he was gaining some traction in the music game, so I was he was a big target. And 051 was definitely celebrating being able to take somebody out like him. But see, now, it was 600's turn to score because D Rose and Trilla would catch 051 Little Mark at a bus stop, murdering him, shooting him in his torso and in his head. Now, after this hit occurred, it was said that more people were involved, like King Von, T Roy, were all in the vehicle because King Von had tweeted out that he was in traffic with D Rose. T Roy had also um, commented certain things about being in that area when that murder occurred. So 600 was able to get a big kill as well because 051 Lil Mark was a big target too because he was also probably at that time one of the most famous 051 members and he had a budding rap career. So he was up and coming as well and 600 was celebrating again. There was multiple Instagram posts by people like Lil Dirk, 
King Von, D. Rose even went back to the spot a few hours after the murder and allegedly recorded a video there. I mean, there were different yeah, yeah. Instagram videos. Like I said, Lil Dirk made a pretty famous one. Bus stop, man. Hey, this, this, hey, 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 this bus stop right here, though? This, this, this is a real famous place, yeah? This is a real famous place. Hey, this bus stop is a real famous place. The war was on, and 051 Melly wanted Lil Dirk dead. But see, by this time, Lil Dirk was knee deep in the rap game. So he really wasn't in Chicago. Well, like I mean, that. Man, he was hard to get to. Him up for real. So what Melly decided to do was kill those closest to Dirk. Starting with Dirk's cousin, OTF Newski, who was also a rapper, and just three days prior had just signed his deal with Little Dirk. So he was uh, you know, ready to get into the rap game That's as a kind of star just like his cousin. But yeah. Melly would cut that short when he caught up with Newski while he was out shopping with a female. Now the story goes. The woman he was with went into the store to do some shopping and Nooski was sitting in the car. That's when 051 Melly popped out on him, shooting him several times in the torso. Nooski tried to drive away, but he just ended up crashing into the front of his store. That's where he died. And Melly definitely took credit on his hit. But see, Melly, Damn. he wasn't done terrorizing Dirk yet. And that's when he put his target on Dirk's other cousin. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? He really... If you move like that, you really don't like niggas. Folk really don't like them niggas. He'll ride around playing dirt, though. And they was riding around playing dirt. I'm talking about singing the lyrics and shit. Like, I mean, hey, if the music hard, you probably gonna you probably gonna play it. You feel me? Like shit. I Manager, mean. OTF Chino, when he caught him sitting in the vehicle, walked up on him, shooting him multiple times, striking him in the head. And again, he let Dirk know he was the one that was causing the pain. He was the one killing his family members. This had Dirk one Melly dead more than anything. And allegedly, he put 150,000 on Melly's head, sending all kinds of killers and ops of the 051 crew Melly's way. First up to try to collect the bag on Melly's head was a trigger happy family member by the name of THF Ryan. Oh, look, super young. One day, he saw 051 Melly and another 051 member named Ario standing out on the corner and that's when he decided he was going to slide down on him letting off multiple shots shooting melly in the head and in the foot and also shooting 051 Ario in the head as well but they were both able to live through these gunshots probably because he just used the 22. unfortunately for raheem he didn't get the money and he would pay for that with his life because 051 melly and 051 Ario caught up with him less than two weeks later shooting him multiple times in his back and killing him actually um 051 no, niggas is surviving his shots bro my boy was using a great the AR was locked up for this murder as we speak but he never told on 051 melly and there's another side to this murder that kind of took things to another level is that thf raheem he was the stepson of a THF general, Bezu, who was a known killer and a legend in Chicago. And once Bezu knew that 051 Melly was behind the murder of his stepson, it raised the stakes and he was ready to put in work. So now 051 Melly really had the trigger happy family, the 600 squad really gunning for him. So he had to move smart. And like I said before, he was able to move smart because he was well connected. He also had a good friend by the name of Mubu Crump, and they bonded because Mubu Crump hated Little Dirt just as much as 051 Melly did. Even though at a certain point, Mubu was cool with Dirt. He was even in one of Dirt's music videos back in the day. But at some point, their relationship turned sour, and now they were sworn enemies, Most making been a lot of football threats to each other online. And Mubu Crump was infamous for dissing the dead ops. He was always counting up the bodies. That's why they call Mubu Crump the scorekeeper. At the same time, I think him being so close with Mubu Crump got him in trouble because of the excessive Instagram dissing of the ops. It made him high priority. It made the other side really want to take him out. Hey, guy, I don't know how you know what you know. Oh, boy. 
Man, been talking. Hello. Who have been talking? 12 minutes straight. Straight information. How the fuck you know this shit, bro? Arthur Swindle, aka OTF New New 21. Them left uh, Chino. I mean, Nooski. There's right here. You feel me? They left his ass up here on folks now. Tweak. THF Bezu would finally get his opportunity to silence the scorekeeper once and for all when he caught Mubu Crump and 051 Melly hanging out in an alley at a party that was going on. Allegedly, he was in the company of Lil Steve from Lamron and Lil T from the Trigger Happy family. And that's a female. They all pulled up on 051 Melly and Crump, started letting off shots, hitting Crump multiple times in the torso. He was rushed to the hospital, but he was later reported dead and hitting Melly several times in his arm almost killing him. Allegedly, he was grazed in the head as well during this attack. Melly was feeling the pain, but the pain wasn't over because Melly would again lose someone close to him when he lost his good friend. Man, this Mona. nigga, this nigga on some 50 cent shit. They talking about they done shot folk in the arm, leg, side, head. My nigga not going like, what the fuck do you need to be mad so, at, Gyro bro? City. <laughs> He had grown That's very close right to him. He had formed an alliance with STL EBT and FBG Duck and Gyro City. They were all clicked up and they all had common enemies being OTF, O Block, 600, THF. They all wanted to take that side out. So they all bonded over that. You know, when we play cards and things like that. But Motor ended up getting killed one day as he was leaving the Golo gas station. A spot that's infamous in Chicago for an 051 hangout and people affiliated with 051 would be there. So a lot of the ops would slide on that gas station hitting people up as they would come and they end up catching motor. You know, him and another member named Side as they was leaving the gas station. Now allegedly 600 was behind this hit. So it was just more pain on Melly's plate. But see, the rest of the ops, the other people that Melly had attacked throughout time was still on the 051 crew and eventually they got another member named 051 Bankroll Q and he was killed by Little Dell of the Folly Boys and T.Y. from GGE as he was attending a party. He was shot multiple times but Melly wasn't playing no games and less than 12 hours later after this murder he caught up with Little Dell shooting him multiple times in his torso where Little Dell was able to make it to the hospital, but he was later pronounced dead. Not too long after this, oh, sure. he caught up with T.Y. Oh, you got to be on your pivot. Y'all moving like that. You got to be on your pivot. All the car, bro. talking to friends. All Melly times. pulled up, rolled down the window, shot him multiple times in the chest, drove off. Another hit under Melly's belt. The legend of 051 Melly was on the rise. He was dropping a lot of bodies on the op side and he was causing them a lot of problems, a lot of headaches, and they wanted them dead. But even though they would diss him a lot on the internet, shoot at him, made multiple attempts on his life, somehow, some way, they still had like respect for him hmm. because him and THF Bezu have some legendary Instagram lives where they're just yeah. going back and forth like no, in a cordial about. way. Saying that, yes, I'm gonna kill you when I see you, but they're actually somewhat nice to each other when they speak in, you know, during their lives. I mean, even King Von, who is legendary when it came to dissing his ops and relentless when it came to that, even he had to give it up for 051 Melly. Now, nigga Melly, now he one of them niggas you could talk to, you know what I'm saying? You could talk to him because he, he cool. All right, and he got a little points, whatever he did, you know? <laughs> he said he got a little okay. points, whatever he did. Now, he tell me. Nah, I, I, I highlight the nigga and shit. The nigga, I mean, he did, or he did right now. But like, he tell me that's who needs to lie. He like, I knew you was gonna get out, shorty. You lost your best friend. God had to let you out. You see what I'm saying? Like, God, he owed you that. I said, that's some real shit for a bitch ass op ass nigga to say, okay, babe? But hmm. even with the respect of his ops, 051 Melly still wanted him dead. And he definitely wasn't done with Little Dirt. He wanted to do to him what he had already been doing, taking out those closest to him since he couldn't get the little Dirk himself. And next up on that list was his blood brother, D-Thang, Baby D from Central City, 
and OTF Fresh. They were all leaving the club. 051 Melly followed them, pulled up alongside of the vehicle, letting off multiple shots. You know what's crazy? Folk was really on that type of time. Look, this nigga follow all these niggas on Instagram, bro. If you go look at this nigga on Instagram, his Instagram like Angie B, Angie B Sons underscore Wu underscore Melly, something like that. Folk follow every last one of these niggas. I'm talking about folk follow King Vaughn, Lil Dirk, probably his cousin, probably his brother, all these niggas. He follow all these niggas, bro. No cap to this day. To this day. And, and some of these niggas follow him back. Like, not all of them. Like, Vaughn, well, I don't think folk follow him, but the, the nigga he be on live with folk, folk follow him. All three men. Only so he probably keeping one. up what they was going to be. He killed Baby D, Dirk's blood cousin. So that will be the third cousin that 051 Melly has taken away out of Dirk's life. Melly was becoming an unstoppable force to his ops. He began to, you know, call himself like the king of the streets and things of that nature. I think he started to maybe believe some of the comments that was being left under his Instagram lives. People telling him how much of a legend he is, how much of a killer he is. I, I think he kind of rebelled in knowing that he had that type of reputation, that people feared him, that people knew the work that he put in at the same time. I think that Melly knew he wasn't going to live too long and he just made the decision and the deal with the devil that however much time he had left here, he was going to spend it wrecking havoc on his ops. But see, it wouldn't be the ops that would end up getting the Melly. It would be a crew who he had affiliations with. See, the Gyro City STL EBT 051 connection that I was talking about earlier, they was also cool with Taekwon World who had ties to STL. But see, Melly had an altercation with a member from Taekwon World named 007 Nate. An altercation that led to Melly sending Nate a message by going to his crib and shooting it up. Shooting up his crib with his girlfriend and his newborn baby inside. This sent 007 Nate over the top. Now, later on that night, 051 Melly was attending a party for a beloved STL member named Can't Get Right. It was in his memory because he had been murdered. But while at this party, 007 Nate showed up. And when he showed up, the following happened. I seen the video. I posted this on my I'm just Instagram. Getting started. I didn't I even know who it was when I posted it. Info gave me the best service for the best price. As a freelancer, the lowest. This is a long time ago. I posted on my ground. I was telling niggas how. This is why I don't move, like, this is why I don't go to parties, this is why I stay to myself, this is why I stay in my own lane. I ain't even know who folk was at the time, you know what I'm saying? But, like, to me, me personally, this video looked like he got a lot of some setups going on. Like, you see Shorty move her hand in the air, then she get the duck in, like, you can see all kind of fish in this video. No boy, no. <laughs> I'ma go back. I ain't even talk about this too much, but notice how Shorty in the yellow, she get the... Then all of a sudden you done dancing, you, you, hey, that's, that's fishy right there. I won Melly was attending a party for a beloved STL member named Can't Get Right. It was in his memory because he had been murdered. But while at this party, 007 Nate showed up. And when he showed up, the following happened. <laughs> The amount of shots dude just let off, bro. That's the amount of shots like you trying to get something done. You trying to finish. You trying to make sure. Like, because normally when a nigga let off some shots or something like that, you'll probably hear three, four. Like, pop, 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 pop. That nigga, like, he wanted to hear that more. He wanted to hear the gun click, bro. Like, listen to this, bro. The following happened. That nigga empty the club. Man, it's a sad situation, you know, losing your life so senselessly due to the streets. And what makes this story even more sad is that 
just about a month before Melly died, the mother of his son also died in a freak accident. She was hit by a train, like trying to get her cell phone or something. Wow, that's crazy, so, bro. Now you got a little boy out there that lost his mom tragically due to an accident and lost his dad as well. And that just makes it that much more crazy, you that's know, crazy. the whole cycle. But even though with all that going on. Yeah, my camera stopped, my nigga, so I'm finna start the video anyway. I had it. <clears throat> thought I heard something behind me. Felt like, nigga, got these clarinets in the background and shit. I and she moving. I don't gotta get my glasses on. I'm gonna lie. But uh, off the rip, that's crazy, man. Hit a little, little dude lost like both his parents like that. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But like, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it a honey. That nigga, folk, folk a legend in, 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 in the city. He a legend for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, when you live by the gun, you gonna die by the gun nine times out of ten, bro. You feel me? Like, we ain't finna get on here and do all the goofy shit. Like, Oh, bro, niggas know what they getting into when they do that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nine times out of ten, you probably be a product of your environment. They be the type of stuff you grow, grow up around, you indulge in. Yeah, I know how they, how they go. You know what I'm saying? So, you feel me? Like, that's just the path they chose to take. But it is kind of, it's sad seeing that cycle because now little folk, with his daddy being so legendary in the city like that, nine times out of ten, he'll probably live, he probably going to try to, Follow in his footsteps and live up to that. He probably gonna try to grow up and get revenge. He probably gonna try to grow up and, you know what I'm saying? Like the cycle gonna continue, continue 24 7. You feel me? It's crazy, but uh, it just saying he ain't like little dude go out like that. You feel me? Like, he need really out here purging, bro. Like, really purging. I ain't gonna lie, it's still going on everywhere. Like, all over every state, every city, everywhere. But in Chicago, it's so different, bro. In Chicago, it's like, like, nigga. Chicago make it seem like you just gonna get away with some shit, like, you feel me? Like, it's like too much going on for real, you feel me? But, uh, anyway, especially when you got niggas having a rank like that, and, and ain't nothing happening to them, they like, that shit crazy, bro, you feel me? But anyways, bro, if y'all like seeing these type of videos and stuff like that, y'all send me what y'all want me to react to. It can't be no stupid long video, bro. Don't send me nothing like an hour long. We probably gonna have to knock it out in parts, because... Now, this is probably going to be the last video for the day, but I knew that before I started. Subscribe to the channel, join the family, man. Hit me up on my ground. All that music on the way, everything on the way. Y'all things going to be live. Let's do this 300K grind. The merch on the way. And we finna go crazy. I got to remember what's some more videos. So, now they got to stop the video. Let's get it, man. I don't really need me to be scared No reason so she think I'm gonna lie to her If she shine, I'm fucking it out of her Hit the counter, I'm fucking on dollars up Anything I'm spend, I'm gonna pile it up All these little niggas wanting some followers If you listen to me, get your dollars up Don't you want me to get rich, nigga, pile it up I'ma give my time to you What you think this AP on my wrist for? I can't fuck with these niggas, they switch up Might go buy me a land, you're a big truck 45 on my shoe, I'm a big step Every on AP, you're the big bells In the loft in LA on the 10 level In the polo, white tee, cause it fit better